everyone. This is the podcast, The Zero Hiccup Way, and I have a guest tonight, Peter Nemi from Recovery Plus. Hi, Peter. How are you today? Ayush, nice to see you. Thanks for having us on. Same here. It's a pleasure uh, because we already see what Recovery Plus has been doing, and I was really looking forward to host you. So, Peter, why not right away you tell us more about uh, Recovery Plus and your plans with it, uh, where it is today, and you know what are your plans in the upcoming year? Sure, no problem at all. So, Recovery Plus is uh, is was conceived, built, started to address uh, the fundamental issue in access to cardiac rehabilitation. Right, this mm-hmm. is access to care is a pretty common theme across all of the healthcare spectrum, um, and our particular niche is cardiac rehab. Uh, Cardiac rehab works. You've had some cardiac event, heart attack. Um, It can, is proven over and over again to dramatically lower uh, your chances of having another one, of having to go back to the hospital, right? Which is obviously bad for the patient, but it's also bad for the doctor. Um, And it's very bad for the payers because a hospital, a ER trip and an ICU stay is, you know, enormously expensive, right? Can run tens of thousands of dollars. So uh, the problem is most people who should be in cardiac rehab are not over 80 percent, according to CMS Medicare. Right. Um, And the reality is that they're simply and I'm talking about the U.S. market now. This does apply in uh, uh, in other markets as well. But this is in the name Recovery Plus USA. So that's what we're focused on building and talking about today. So there just simply are not enough uh, clinics. There mm-hmm. are enough to service maybe 20% of the market. Um, and a lot of the I- issues with access to care or geography, right? If you're three or four hours from a clinic, which many people are, um, and you're not able to maybe drive on your own. So now not only do you have to go, but your caregiver needs to take you. And right. just be, it becomes right. impossible. Right. Uh, economics are also a, a, a factor um, that these services are usually covered by uh, by insurance, Medicare. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was our <clears throat> goal. The reality is that the only way you're going to scale cardiac rehab so that everyone who needs it, wants it, can access it, is to make it home-based, to make it virtual. Maybe it's okay. a hybrid, you go to a clinic once a month, and then you do your virtual sessions. But if you need to go to three or four or five sessions per week, um, mm-hmm. it's got to be home-based. And the reality right. is it can be. These are not right. complex routines. They require monitoring by a healthcare professional, because obviously we're dealing with a population that in some cases is high risk. Mm -hmm. Um, But what you're doing, you know, doesn't need complex machines. You don't need to be in a gym with with, uh, all kinds of weight machines, Uh, almost no equipment, a chair, comfortable clothes, the yoga mat's nice. That's that's about it. Um, And so it can be home-based. So over the years, we've built out um, our process. Uh, we have exercise physiologists, registered nurses, and medical directors who know how to do this. We have a mobile app that's patient facing, so you can watch your exercise routine while you're doing it with your health care. Um, and that's really our goal is to scale access to cardiac rehab, um, recognizing the only way to do that, right? The idea that, well, we could just open more clinics. So you'd need to open five times as many clinics in the U.S. to serve the market. Even that wouldn't still work because of geography, but even there's just, there's no, the economics aren't there, right? The business is not uh, right. up to support that many clinics. And, you know, these are not, these are clinics. These are not in the business of, you know, lost leaders or, uh, you know, opening things ahead of the, right. of the revenue. They're not, they're the opposite. They're small businesses. Right. Um, so, that's the quick overview of our story. Um, we were founded by, I'm one of three partners. Uh, Dr. Lei Zhen was a surgeon from China who I met at, uh, at business school. Um, okay. Really kind of the driving force behind uh, this mission. Uh, Tim Bilbrey, who is a uh, exercise physiologist with a specialty in cardiac rehab out in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the head of clinical operations in the US. And then I, <clears throat> manage the company. My background is, is in pharmaceutical marketing. So I've been working with big and boutique pharma, big, big diseases and rare diseases all over the all over the map. 
for my entire career commercializing healthcare products, drugs, uh, prescription drugs, medical devices, what have you, uh, finding their target market and commercializing whether that target market is the patients or the healthcare professionals. So that's really what Recovery Plus needed in addition to the clinical experts, here we are. Right, okay. That sounds like a really comprehensive introduction. So thank you so much, Peter, on that. So uh, yeah. Peter, my next question is like, uh, you know, every platform, uh, you know, has its own challenges. And uh, of course, um, any founder or entrepreneur's value comes when they are able to solve those challenges. So in your journey, do you recall any major challenges that you guys uh, ran into and would like to share how you came across <clears throat> them and then solved them or worked through them and how did it work out? Or... Sure, absolutely. Uh, well, I will leave aside, I will mention, but not really focus on the development of our uh, patient-facing platform. Um, uh, uh, you know, because we've discussed uh, redoing the UX and do, doing work like that. Um, it needs to be, uh, it needs to be um, upgraded and made more user-friendly for the U.S. market. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one challenge we're working on. Uh, the reality is that that's not a showstopper. Everything is working fine now. We have uh, close to a thousand patients on active treatment. Um, However, we are in that interesting <clears throat> pivot in, we're not really a startup anymore, right? We're a revenue positive company with a lot of patience and a lot of, lot of traction. So we're not a mature company yet, but we're not a startup. <clears throat> and what we recognize is, you know, if you, if you, if you read the literature, like the, the famous book, Crossing the Chasm, and mm -hmm. we're right at the point where you have to realize that what got you here, what got you the no. concept, right. what got you first paying customers, is not what will get you to be five times, right. 10 times, whatever your right. goals are. Right. You have to change the orbit. Yeah. <laughs> we have to streamline things. We have to uh, make things more scalable, more quickly. So that's really what we're working on. The app is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. The thing that I would mention, and I say that, that because that's kind of cool. That's the heart of the business. It's a, there's no one's ever done this, like put out a consumer facing app. Uh, specifically aimed at the chronic care, cardiac rehab market that doesn't exist. We'll be, uh, we're, we're, we have that and we're right. improving it. Right. The less, I, uh, the less exciting and uh, more operational uh, thing is uh, simply that we are insurance based, right? Everything we do is reimbursed uh, by Medicare and the other major insurance companies across all of the United States. So two things we need to do up front was make sure that we were uh, approved to treat and approved to bill in all of the 50 states. Um, and it is state by state. So 50 approvals times two, <laughs> 100 approvals. Right. It's, it's a process. We're, I'm happy to say we're at the end stage of that. We've got most of the states. And I think there's a few a few laggards, but you know, they're, we'll, right, we'll get there. Right. right. No, it and definitely the, takes a lot of time and energy. Yeah, extremely time consuming and uh, yeah, and, and costly. Um, the other thing that I would say that was really important was billing. Um, we have, as I said, closing in on a thousand patients, several billing codes per patient per month based on the <laughs> services we provide. Before you know it, it's several thousand uh, individual line items go out every month. And if you want to go right. to 10 times the size, you could very mm -hmm. easily envision a place where we're sending out 100,000 line items every mm -hmm. month. That needs to be automated. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, and we have gone through a process pretty much has taken us most of this year, um, finding a combination of partners, vendors that could enable that. So again, happy to report that the November billing process, I'll find out you know, early this week, because it just went out. Okay. I think we will be able to say it's done. It's automated. Mm -hmm. What used to take a week for 100 patients now takes two days for 1,000. This is okay. what I brought on to do. Um, and so, yeah, so not really, not really uh, exciting and sexy topic, but I will tell you that 
um, optimizing and automating the billing process was absolutely the number one showstopper for being able to scale this business. And it's taken us a year uh, to figure it out. Okay, great, great. In fact, that was one of my uh, questions to ask about scaling up the users, uh, which you have, uh, uh, you know, answered in part already, like, you know, the systems that you set up and the uh, automation that you set up. Anything else in particular that you, uh, that really changed for you when you scaled up the company from, say, the few hundred users to, say, the thousands of users today? Um, so I'd say, well, one thing is just simply we added staff, real customer-facing, patient-facing staff. Patients, whenever we speak to our patients, and of course we do that all the time, the number one thing they talk about is how much they love their treater, the personal service, uh, the, the reassurance, right? These are people who are generally worried. They know they should start doing this program, but they're worried that it will trigger mm -hmm. another heart event. They're, you know, mm -hmm. with good reason, right. they're, they're concerned. Um, and so they love that reassurance. So clearly, okay. for all of the technology and the health tech that we describe ourselves as, and we are, what our customers see is not. It's human. It's the person on the other end of the line of the video chat, of the app, who's looking out for them and monitoring them. So we really scaled that up. Clearly, excellent customer service is why people love uh, our offering. And so mm -hmm. let's double down on that, just <laughs> as we're fixing the tech nice. and the billing customers, patients. They don't care about any of that. They care about excellent service. So that was that. Um, and um, th that's, that's really probably the, the biggest thing. I've already talked about uh, uh, billing. The other thing I would talk about then is on the sales side, right? We go to clinics, obviously, cardiologists, um, senior centers we have as patients. They refer their likely candidates into our program. So as we, as I said earlier, as we start to think, well, how do we get to the next level? Well, it's not do 10 times what you've done already, right? right? It's evolving. So we're starting to talk, we are talking to insurance companies, right? Mm -hmm. Big providers, big employers who aren't going to refer, you know, 10 or 20 or right, 50. Right. And they're going to refer thousands. Right. Uh, so that's really... Uh, that's really that is start to think if you look at scale, how can you really scale it up? For example, we just inked a, <clears throat> made, came to an agreement with the Mended Hearts, which is the biggest yeah. nonprofit um, heart health uh, in the US, if you will. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we're just starting to scale that up. They have a huge member base. We can, you know, obviously we have to work with them and abide by their guidelines because. You know, nonprofits aren't really going to endorse any company, but we just be made aware to their member base that if you're in the market for cardiac rehab, and there are a lot of them are, most of them are, then there's a home-based option where you don't have to travel, insurance mm -hmm. based, so it doesn't cost anything, and right. it can take two to three months to get into treatment, right? right? That's two of most clinics. Um, right. We're at 72 hours right now, and we want to get it down to a day. Okay. By the okay. beginning of the year. Get started. Mm -hmm. Home base, no equipment, no cost. Mm -hmm. You can be with an EP. It's Monday. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Wednesday. Right, right. So definitely, I think there's a upcoming trend of uh, home based care because it comes with its own advantages. But I think most importantly, it uh, bypasses the uh, normal choke points that uh, our current healthcare systems, you know, because of the availability of doctors and the distances and uh, yes. uh, the ecosystem availability uh, you know creates so yeah that's great sure. so one uh, yeah of course and also of, of course the you know the public health emergency that we you know that's been geographically non-discriminatory right. all these last two plus years right um, has clearly made that even more to the forefront right if a doctor's not going to see patients in person at all without a, without a virtual visit, there's no visit. Right. So Peter, uh, uh, when I heard your story, the uniqueness uh, I found was that you started your platform first in China and then you guys moved to the US. So in the hindsight, uh, 
do you feel that uh, you know it should have been the reverse way or do you feel that was the right decision to make like for fellow entrepreneurs what are the lessons learned by building for, or launching your platform first in china and then to the us and then when you did this shift uh, what kind of challenges you faced sure so the chinese uh, my my chinese uh, colleagues have been developing this platform for probably about seven it's about seven years the china team working with patients there's clinical research, uh, several papers, which I could share that have been published about um, the efficacy of home-based care. Mm -hmm. When all of that clinical work and the great work of the clinical and medical team in China was done. So proof of concept, we had it already, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, value proposition, we had it already. Patient reactions, clinical studies, we had all of that. What we didn't have was how does it translate to the US? Um, but that didn't take us five years to figure out. Um, we already had uh, uh, Tim Bilbrey, who's a cardiac rehab specialist in Texas, so he knew the billing and he knew how okay. to navigate the system. And so did we have to figure out some operational things? I described them earlier, but it didn't take five years. It took one. Um, we know the medical platform is solid. We know the app is solid. This is not some MVP, minimum viable product. It's just, you know, going out for the first time. It's all very robust. So how it works in the US, some operational questions. Like I said, I think we're in the, I'm very confident we're in the end stages of solving them all. Um, so yeah, dramatically accelerated. A lot more things would have broken in the US if we'd started from scratch. Mm -hmm. So we were really able to stand on the shoulders of the China team who had already done all of that clinical work. Okay, great, great. So one last question, uh, Peter, for today. Uh, what do you foresee as the future of digital health in 2023 in context with the cardiac care, in context with home care, the spaces where you are operating in? How do you see the future for the next two, uh, one year, 2023, and then maybe a few more years, if you'd like? Sure, sure. Well, uh, again, uh, obviously, the, the, the COVID-19 has taken virtual visits from a really, you know, a nice, interesting thing to an absolute essential for patients and, um, and providers at, uh, alike. Um, don't, that's not going to stop anytime soon. Many people have recognized, right? Obviously, there are some in-person visits, you know, for surgery or something like that. Yeah. Where, like the hybrid work workspaces we have, or the work culture also we are going hybrid. It's changed everything, right? I think occupancy, I'm in New York, occupancy of office spaces in New York is, it's at 40% uh, mm -hmm. was last I looked um, of the, you know, pre-public uh, health emergency. So it's changed everything. So that's just going to continue to, uh, I think the growth rate certainly will slow down because it was explosive for a couple of years and people are returning to the office and they are returning to the, you know, I was, I, so my doctor last week, um, so you can go to in-person visits, obviously. Um, but on the other hand, there are things like if you are out of out of state, right? If you have a college student who wants to continue to see, see their college in Chicago and their doctors in New York, why do they need to go to a new doctor as opposed to the doctor they've seen for you know 18 years of their life? So that's changed. That requires you know um, billing billing uh, approvals and the regulatory issues there, which topic for another day, that's a long conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I think it will continue to get, clearly it will continue to get more uh, robust. There are companies that similar to ours in different verticals who have been through the learning curve, right? Who have spent a couple of years mm -hmm. correcting their mistakes, which we all make. And it's only gonna get, uh, get more robust. The business models are starting to, are starting to stabilize, you know, ours included, and there are some other wonderful uh, companies out there. So yeah, I think it will uh, be interesting to see how the industry kind of consolidates. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as companies as ours get bigger, do we merge, acquire? Right, there are other offerings. We're a cardiac rehab company. There's an obvious extension there where we could offer, you know, for example, mental health uh, facility. Right our mm -hmm. platform right we offer diet we offer exercise mm -hmm. well there's a pillar there which we do touch on but it's not a core competency and you know mental the mental health of someone mm -hmm. recovering from okay. event is as important as their physical health right so 
So that there's na there's natural room for growth, um, consolidation, expanding the offering, and I think uh, and, you know you'll see some shakeout too, where there's some offerings that are not fully baked and. Um, they're going to come under competition from really well thought through platforms of which I, of course, uh, count recovery plus <laughs> amongst <laughs> those. Sure. Sure. I'm in. <laughs> so thank you so much, Peter. And we wish you all the best. Uh, I must say that coming from India, I know the cardiac market, you know, is definitely uh, one big market in India as well. <laughs> so uh, sure. Sure. sometime offline, we should also chat about that. Uh, but thank you so much for sharing your wisdom today and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you.